I'm here at the Carrizo Gorge. I consider this the official start to the tour. Well, I did start pedaling from San Diego, but uh, that didn't go so well. It was just because it was so close to the Mexican border. Well, I guess I only got interrogated once, but if I was to do this again, I'd take the bus to Cameron Corners and start there. Looks like someone was really suffering here. I've been through this experience, I know what it's like. But the fat bike cruises over this stuff, no problem. Still trying to figure out how to juggle around keeping everything charged up. I think the best thing to do is charge up the phone while I'm taking breaks and then put the panel on the back of the bike and trickle charge a battery bank while I'm riding and use that bank at the end of the day to top everything up. We're getting the hard part done first. After this, it'll be downhill to Palm Springs. I just had a long climb up from Yucca Valley and now I'm in the Bighorn Mountain Wilderness. Uh, there's supposed to be a BLM cabin up here somewhere. I'll check that out and see if it's any good. But I believe that I'm going up through here somehow. Come stay in the Rattlesnake Cabin. Enjoy a storybook setting both cozy and picturesque. The Great Room has woodsy accents which infuses historic flair to any occasion. No thanks. Somehow I got way off course. I think this is the wash I want. Still haven't found the road. Found it.
I can say the Mojave Road isn't really a road. It's just a choose your own adventure through the desert here. So this cabin was marked on the map, and I really wanted to make it here last night. So I ended up riding in the darkness. I couldn't follow the, the road for the life of me. I was just coming right down the middle of this, completely out of control. Anyways, I was really hoping this would be one of the few nice maintained cabins, but you can probably see my tent out back. It tells you I didn't want to sleep in there. This miner's cabin will instantly warm the heart of any host. Enjoy a gourmet meal in the magnificent dining area. Relax in elegance by the fireplace. Sunny, spacious, and sparkling with freshness. No thanks. So last time I fat biked Death Valley, I came in uh, past Dumont Dunes over there, and I went up and around on Saratoga Spring Road. This time I'm going in on Harry Wade Road. And I hope I have enough groceries because uh, I should have stocked up twice as much in Yucca Valley. I'm sitting about sea level right now. I've got almost 4,000 feet of climbing up to Golar Wash Road. It is quiet out here. Almost to the top. Just a little bit more climbing up to the geologist cabin and uh, straight across to Mango Pass, way over there. And almost there. Feels good. Just around the corner here is Ballarat. If I can get stocked up there on food, then I can keep going on my long route within Death Valley. If not, I'm going to have to go on the pavement and uh, I could beat a lone pine by tonight, maybe, or tomorrow morning at least. So I got stocked up pretty good there on food in Ballarat. Uh, so I've got chili and uh, Ducati beer for breakfast today. So today I've got a good length of pavement to cross to get up to the racetrack road. And uh, yesterday too, I had mostly pavement to get up Emigrant Pass. But God, I felt like I was going to croak going up that thing. Now that uh, Stovepipe Wells is 30 miles behind me, I realize I probably should have taken a day off. Got a lot of work ahead of me here. I think they improved the road a little bit. It seems better than the last time I was here. But the washboard is still here. Full force. Sometimes you can just sneak along the side to get around it. But if you hit this stuff at full speed, it's enough to launch you right off your bike. Well, I made it down Lippincott to the Saline Valley. Up next... The South Pass climb, and after that, the Cerro Gordo climb. But that's not all. Just for fun, let's throw in the Swansea grade too.
Yeah, a fighter jet just came straight up out of that valley and he flew upside down over those rocks. It was crazy. I was hoping he'd come back and do it again so I could get it on camera. But yeah, these, these trails have been pretty fun. Right now I can either go that way or that way and it'll take me out to the same spot on the Death Valley Road. I think I choose this one. made it up the first climb of Titus Canyon and I think what I'm gonna do is spend the whole day out here on this road maybe find a summit hike or something to do but I'm doing my best to work in some easy days in between the hard bits after last week's ordeal God it's so much more enjoyable when your legs aren't screaming at you Titus Canyon was awesome just as good the second time through but I could definitely say the roads have all improved a lot since the last time I was here. I think it was because the last time I was here, there was a storm not long before. how I plan this section out it's really cool I gotta go up that hill over there that'll be tomorrow right now I'm tired and I think I will sleep right over there well my luck ran out pretty quick today but I did some looking around and it looks like the ATVs are still going up and around over there and just skipping this part so that's what I'm gonna do I'm not ready to give up yet Find it kind of funny that people got to drive absolutely everywhere on every single surface even though it says no vehicles right there I'm leaving over 
Overton behind this morning on the road again. I decided to take a day off, just get a bit of rest. Had a bunch of maintenance to do on my bike. And there's a warning issue ahead that the roads are impassable in the Grand Canyon Parachant. It's all the rainfall they got. So from here, uh, I'm going out straight through that canyon, and I don't know the last time anyone drove through there. Last week, last year, last decade, I don't know. About 25 kilometers until I get out to the main back roads. Good news! There's actually a road here. I can't believe it. I should have a fairly interesting climb ahead of me. I'm in Utah and the scenery is changing once again. Headed up to Big Water in the Grand Staircase. I got some silly plans to take care of there. I didn't want to pitch my tent last night, but then uh, I turned on my headlamp. I could see all these little eyes looking at me. I was surrounded by spiders. <laughs> so I put the tent up in a hurry after that. I wasn't sure if I was smelling the smoke on my clothes again, but yeah, there's a there's another coal seam fire over there. Just smoldering away. I'm gonna go back and check it out. They were definitely mining for coal here at one time. You can see the heat just pouring out of the hole over there. But walking on the ground, it feels hollow. It feels like I'm gonna fall through, like right there. I'm headed up into the Escalant Mountains today. I'm going to leave these nice warm temperatures behind. I'll be climbing up to 10,000 feet on this one. It's 
2 o'clock in the afternoon. The snow is really starting to soften up. I was sinking up to my knees over there. I could have, God, another 10 miles of snow before I get below 9,000 feet elevation. Might be easier just to wait for tomorrow morning when it hardens up again. Well, I got the road back. It took the most part of the day to get through there. So if you've seen my going east across the west video, you know I've been here before. I'm in skinny tires, struggling to get anywhere, running low on water, so I headed out to the highway over there. But today, today I'm doing good, so I'm gonna go this way. It's actually not a long section of Hanksville, so uh, what I'm doing is I packed an additional three liters of water. And I'm gonna stash it up here in uh, the Bell Canyon, and I'll be back in about two weeks to pick it up when I'm on a harder section. It seems like when I just bring enough water to get by, my mind starts playing games with me and I'm always thirsty. So I'm going to start trying to bring more than I need and see how that works. just follows all the way along these cliffs all the way around must have taken a lot of effort to build this eventually I'll connect onto the flint trail today and out to height so my plan to route was to go up through that notch there and connect onto the flint trail but when I started out on the poison springs there was an old map at the trailhead and it showed this road it's supposed to switch back up these cliffs here and connect onto the flint trail from there and then go down those switchbacks if it all works out. I can see some tire treads. Maybe someone drove their Honda Civic up here. But I can see traces of the road up until about that point. See the rest of the road now. Almost there. I think I'm on the last switchback now. It's pretty tough. There's a few boulders to climb over on the way. I don't think anyone's driven this in at least 50 years. Oh, come on. There's no way. So here we have the road. And if you look to your left, yep, that is right there. That 
that storm just rolled right over top of me. I yanked out my tent fly and hid under there. Actually stayed pretty dry. But I think it's time to find a place to camp before I get soaking wet. There's a lot of snow. I cannot get through here. I'm gonna go back about a kilometer. I think there might be a way I can shortcut around this. If you ever hear that crying in the distance, like some siren. Maybe there's a singer with no ring around their little finger, no love. And if I lose my voice, if I have no choice but to go quiet, won't you sing for me a melody into the night air? If I die too young, or the wolf he comes, fi fa fo fo. I just entered Canyonlands National Park. Got a bit of shelter from the wind here, but it's just been gusting like crazy today, getting sandblasted. you do but you don't got say a prayer think of mother I am a rock if you ever hear that sound now if the door gets kicked in here they come now think of others be their cover, I am what they're not. Pray for Paris, they cannot scare us or stop the music. You got a sweet voice, child, why don't you use it? And if I die too young, of the gunman come, I'm full of love. So release me, every piece of me, up above. I'm headed up Hurrah Pass now. I'm getting close to Moab. Beautiful morning. The wind has finally stopped. Next up is the White Rim. It's just non-stop here. One amazing ride after the other. Love my sister, can't stand the coppers up in their choppers. Oh, flying over here, 49 days.
exactly how I like to finish my days. The gigantic hill climb. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Freddy Gray. But sleep easy. Like baby Jesus. In the manger. Oh, sleep easy. Like little Jesus. Beautiful stranger. Beautiful stranger Canyon. I don't think I have enough sunlight left to go fetch my water cache tonight, so I'll have to go do that first thing tomorrow morning. I didn't expect this section of road to be so gnarly. I know after Bell Canyon it's supposed to get worse, so we'll see what that's like. <laughs> Somehow there's a trail through here. I think I can just make it out up on that ledge and below those cliffs. It's unbelievable. I just came up here and right now I'm at this intersection. This was the shortcut that I had planned. If I went that way I could beat a Farron by lunchtime. But uh, I think I have enough supplies so I'm gonna go the long way around uh, to the little Grand Canyon and the wedge overlook. I think this is why they call it the coal wash. You can really smell it. <laughs> approach down the Farron. I've got a liter and a half of water left and a cliff bar. I cut it close, but I did okay. <laughs> I'd love to change the world, but I'm still not sure quite how. I've been complaining since I was five years old. I'm still complaining now. And the moonshine is the sunshine shining. Minutes later, crocodile, that's just another name for alligator. And the greatest one, the one who always knew that he was greater. The straightest line is crooked, and it ain't. 
this line it's crooked. Shit, this is a lot harder than I thought it'd be. I think I'm almost to the pass. And once I get there, it starts dropping off. I don't want to say that yet though. <laughs> hard to leave Utah behind but I'm excited for Nevada too. I'm gonna roughly follow along the Pony Express now towards Reno. Got a lot of peaks and valleys to cross but so far these roads are really quiet. Canyon Chalet is a beautifully crafted masterpiece. Every detail has been carefully designed to provide the most luxurious comfort. This breathtakingly gorgeous property is a dream come true. No thanks. I do believe I've reached the high point of the day. I'm gonna bundle up and coast down to the valley now. trail just keeps getting narrower. At this point I think only cows are using it. day straight on down to Tonopah. No hills, no wind, no traffic. Just gonna put on a podcast and pedal away. Hey what's going on? It's Bill Byrne. It's time for the Monday morning podcast for Monday fucking April 30th 
2018. What's going on? How are you? I'm cutting across to the west now towards Bodie and Bridgeport using these old mining roads. I'm staying south of Hawthorne. That's a big military ammunition supply depot. I don't need to go there. But it's almost starting to look like the Mojave Desert here. I mean, Death Valley is only about 60 miles south of me. Got a nice open concept design here. Leading to the library. What do we got? Reader's Digest, 1964. It's really too bad that no one's maintaining these cabins. I feel like they're important pieces of American history. Just to let them fall on the ground like this, it's disappointing. There's really only been two moments on this tour that it's been painfully hot. The first was in Saline Valley, and the second was near Big Water, Utah. Other than that, it's been reasonable. I thought I was going to get roasted across the Pony Express, but it was actually chilly. This afternoon I'm going to start working on Mount Patterson. That one tops out at 11,600 feet. This tour this tour has been awesome. Uh, I'm really happy with it. But I'm also ready to go home and uh, relax and start planning out the next one. So I've decided to give Mount Patterson a shot this morning. This isn't how I planned it, but uh, the only other option is to go down to the highway and skip it completely. Worst case scenario, Actually, I don't want to think about the worst case scenario. It's going to focus on getting over this mountain. I think what I got to do is carry my bike all the way up there. This is becoming too much. I'm not properly equipped for this. I'm going to head down to the low road. Next time I'll make it happen. There's always next time. Over there is Monitor Pass and that leads down to Topaz Lake. That was part of my going east across the west route. And off in the distance, those white capped mountains, that's the that's the Sweetwater Range. It's the backside of Mount Patterson. I don't know if I would have made it, but uh, it would have been epic, that's for sure. Anyways, I'm gonna pitch my tent here. I am toast. The suburbs of Dayton ended abruptly and just turned into a dirt road. This is the old Sutro Tunnel Road. I'm going to take this up. I think I can get to Virginia City on this. Then after that, there's one more hill to go over, and I'm in Reno. That's it. That is the end. I think I said this morning that I had two hills to go over, but uh, it's actually more like one. One big-ass hill with a city sitting on the side of it. This road is brutal punishment till the very end.
just have to roll down to Reno now and that's it. It's a wrap. So thanks for watching. Thanks for coming along. And uh, until next time, happy trails. <laughs>